my lovely, lovely imps, uh, thank you for being here today. If you've been having fun so far, pre please go down and pop the like button and consider subscribing. If you're not an imp already, we would love to have you be a subscribed imp. Double bonus points for you if you ring the bell. We'd love to have you. Um, we have a lot to talk about. We got to talk about Twitter. Um, for those of you uh, who are new to my channel, uh, I have been on Twitter for a very long time. I've had some really fun times on Twitter. Uh, I get up to some shenanigans. I post a lot of shit posts. I make a lot of people laugh on Twitter. We've had a really good time, and I actually have quite a large following on Twitter. My following on Twitter is almost as big as my following on YouTube, which is pretty uh, pretty incredible given that I stream on YouTube for eight hours multiple times a week, regardless. Twitter is done for. I just did a video, which you can go check out if you so desire it. There will be a link right here. It's called Social Media is Dying. The, we're going to put the link here and so you guys can go check it out. Um, but this is kind of a, this should serve as a little bit of an update. If you want the full story, go watch that video. If you want to just the update, come fucking listen right now because that's what we're doing. Now, uh, things have been getting really wild on Twitter. First, let me just share my personal experience with Twitter. Uh, I am very open about the fact that I am a Twitter power user, okay? I love Twitter. Uh, I've met a lot of really cool people on Twitter. I have a lot of fun on Twitter. I find lots of memes on Twitter. In fact, uh, my community even has a little set of rules for Twitter that we call the Imps Code, which aren't as relevant anymore because, well, Twitter is on fire. And that sucks. Um, let me just talk about my personal experience with Twitter. First things first, the spam is out of goddamn control, okay? My DMs have been loaded with spam group chat invites, with Bitcoin scam messages, all kinds of stuff. Now, thankfully, I have filters, or I have it set to just block by default, or not block, but, but slot, slot them away uh, if it's somebody that doesn't already follow me. I don't get DMs from people who don't follow me, and I don't get DMs from people who I don't follow. They go into their own separate thing. But that tab has been crammed full of garbage. So there's a lot of people who are reaching out to me for legitimate reasons that I'm missing their messages because there's so much goddamn garbage in the in the DM uh, uh, in the DM like request pile. The spam since Elon Musk started Twitter 2.0 has gotten so out of control it's not even funny. Also, the mobile app especially is busted. Um, I have constant issues loading content on my timeline. I have absolutely, um, I have constant issues loading media on my timeline. The, uh, for, for about two days earlier this week, every time I would scroll my timeline, there were just large broken blocks, uh, like b just solid black broken block covering up tweets because of media uh, that was loading improperly and just blocking everything out. Um, it's terrible. DMs are busted. If you're in a group chat, you probably have noticed that the, that, uh, there's massive lag every time you send a message, no matter how fast your internet is, there is a huge amount of lag every time you type a message into a group chat. And often the message will, will start to send and then fail and you'll be typing another message and it will just delete your message that you're typing and then give you a failed message. It is so annoying. It is so goddamn annoying. Oh my God, it's annoying. So uh, I have found group chats to be next to unusable. Um, in addition, DMs just do not refresh anymore. It used to be that you could reliably expect that you would see a new message when it comes in. Good luck not. Uh, good luck getting new messages without F5ing the page. Just, whew, just terrible. Um... Yeah, Gayfesh says, I, I had wondered why nobody had talked in my giant group chat for 10 hours until I closed and reopened Twitter, and there it was. Yes, you like you have to manually refresh if you want to get your new messages. This did not used to be an issue. It is constantly happening now. It is incredibly obnoxious. So there's all of that. There's all of those technical issues. 
But there's also a couple of other really major technical things we have to talk about, okay? Let me just show you this real quick, okay? Yep, thank you very much. That was literally exactly what I was about to talk about. Let's do this right here. We're gonna read an article real quick, okay? 5.4 million Twitter users stolen data leaked online, even more shared privately. This was, uh, this is from November 27th. This is literally, this version of the, this article is from today. Now, we're gonna read this article, but I need to tell you something else, which is that a very, very large and very popular lefty uh, commentator, let's call him a commentator, named Chad Loader, who many of you have heard of Chad Loader. Chad Loader built a name for himself uh, on Twitter, reporting on protests, reporting on lefty news. Um, Chad Loader was recently suspended from Twitter, permanently, indefinitely suspended from Twitter for posting an article showing proof that indeed there had been a second data breach at Twitter. Literally got banned for reporting about a data breach at Twitter. I'm not kidding you. It is that bad. That is that is how bad it's gotten already. Now we're gonna talk about some of the other examples of people who have been banned or kicked off of Twitter simply for being critical. But for now, I want you to understand that what I'm talking about here isn't just me complaining about the state of Twitter. I opened with my personal technical complaints because I wanted you to understand from my user perspective as a power user, which I admit I am a Twitter power user, as shameful as it is, whatever. Um, I've had a good time, so I don't feel bad about it, but whatever. Uh, you need to understand that there's a lot of security issues going on right now. A lot of very serious security issues that should make you think twice about using the site. Let's read this article. Over 5.4 million Twitter users records containing non-public information stolen, stolen using an API vulnerability that was fixed in January have been shared for free on a hacker forum. Another massive, potentially more significant data dump of millions of Twitter records has also been disclosed by a security researcher. That was Chad, Chad Loader. Uh, demonstrating how widely abused this bug was by threat actors. The data consists of scraped public information as well as private phone numbers and email addresses that are not meant to be public. That's right. The latest breach was of phone numbers and email addresses. So there's a chance, there's a pretty decent chance that some of you in chat uh, have had your phone number and email address as well as other public information associated with your Twitter leaked to hackers. I just need you to be aware of that. There's a reason why I'm talking about this as the first real segment of the day and why I preceded it with a little quick tutorial about Mastodon. Really bad, okay? The Twitter data breach. Last July, a threat actor began selling the private information of over 5.4 million Twitter users on a hacking forum for $30,000. While most of the data consisted of public information such as Twitter IDs, names, login names, locations, and verified status, it also included private information such as phone numbers and email addresses. The data was collected on December 2021 using a Twitter API vulnerability disclosed in the HackerOne bug bounty program that allowed people to submit phone numbers and email addresses into the API to retrieve the associated Twitter ID. Using this ID, the threat actors could then scrape public information about how the account about the account to create a user record containing both private and public information shown below. So um, what this basically means is that because of the way the hack was done, they are now able to, to take things that you posted publicly and associate that with a phone number and an email address. Now, if you've ever posted anything political, if you've ever posted anything personal that you that you wouldn't really care about people knowing about unless they knew who you were, that's concerning. That's very concerning. Let's continue. It is unclear if the hacker one disclosure was leaked, but Bleeping Computer, which is this which is this website we're reading from right now, was told that multiple threat actors were utilizing the bug to steal private information from Twitter. After Bleeping Computer shared a sample of the user records with Twitter, the social media company confirmed that they had suffered a data breach, which was fixed, which was supposedly fixed in January 2022. Pom Pom Purin, the owner of the breached hacking forum, told Bleeping Computer this weekend that they were responsible for exploiting the bug and creating the massive dump. Um, after a, another threat actor known as Devil shared the vulnerability with them. 
In addition to the 5.4 million records for sale, there were also an additional 1.4 million Twitter profiles for suspended users, which were collecting a different API, bringing the total to almost 7 million total profiles containing private information. Pom 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 Purin said that the second data dump was not sold and was only shared privately, which means nobody knows exactly how many have been affected and what it's been used for. However, in September, and now more recently on November 24th, yeah, that's just three days ago, the 5.4 million Twitter records have now been shared for free on a hacking forum. Pom Pom Purin has confirmed to Bleeping Computer that this is the same data set that was for sale earlier in August and concludes over and includes over 5 million Twitter records. These records contain private email addresses or phone numbers and public scrape data, including ID, name, screen name, verified status, location, URL, description, follower account, account creation date, friends, favorites, statuses, and profile images. An even larger data dump was privately created. While it is concerning that the threat actors released the 5.4 million records for free, an even larger data dump was allegedly created using the same vulnerability. This, is, this data dump potentially contains tens of millions of Twitter records consisting of personal phone numbers collected using the same bug and public information, including verified status, account names, Twitter ID, bio, and screen name. This new, the, the news of this more significant data breach comes directly from security expert Chad Loader. Now you'll remember I just mentioned Chad Loader. Chad Loader was permanently banned from Twitter for reporting on this. Because guess what? Elon Twitter wanted to keep this one under wraps and they didn't tell anybody that there, that there, was, a, that there was basically a second wave of breaches. So Elon Twitter has been mm, nice and quiet about the fact that a bunch of their users are in danger. And I wonder why that would be. Could it be that Twitter is in a gigantic crisis right now? And the idea that the, that the website is completely unsafe would ruin their user base? Well, there you have it. The unfortunate news is that, yes, it is d d disgustingly unsafe at the moment. And they don't care. Twitter doesn't care. They didn't even care to inform people. And in fact, they banned an, a literal expert and writer who wrote on this. Let's continue. Chad Loader first broke the news on Twitter and was suspended soon after posting. Loader subsequently posted a redacted sample of the larger data breach on Mastodon. I have just received evidence of a massive data breach affecting millions of Twitter accounts in the EU and the US. I have contacted a sample of the affected accounts and they have confirmed that the breach data is indeed accurate. Chad Loader did the footwork. He reached out to people who whose information showed up in the list privately and said, hey, is this information accurate? If so, you've been hacked. Bleeping Computer has obtained a sample file of this previously unknown Twitter data dump, which contains 1,377,132 phone numbers just for users in France. We have since confirmed with numerous users in this leak that the phone numbers are valid, verifying that this additional data breach is indeed real. Furthermore, none of these phone numbers are present in the original data sold in August, illustrating how much larger of a Twitter data breach that was than previously disclosed and the large amount of user data circulating among threat actors. Oh boy. Oh my God. So, <clears throat> so let's just let's just review what we learned here. That there are close to 10 million people whose private information have been breached that Twitter knew about. Because keep in mind, the initial breach happened back in in uh, in January of 2021. So this is a, an old breach and new breaches since then. Twitter has known about it. Elon Twitter definitely knew about this and haven't done anything about it except for ban the guy who revealed that it was happening. That is so horrible. That is so dreadfully bad. Now, I am not a lawyer and I am not a uh, a tech lawyer, but I want you to understand that that covering up in any way, shape, or form, a data breach of this level is a severely, severely suspect act. 
And it actually, there is a real possibility that this incident gets Twitter removed from the Google and Apple stores because Google and Apple take privacy and security, believe it or not, relatively seriously, especially for very popular apps. Now, we all know that there was some risk that Twitter literally just instantly died and that that's still a real a realistic possibility. We don't know how many people are even remain or even remain working on Twitter at the moment. It is possible at any moment that there is a catastrophic uh, server downtime that Twitter cannot come back from. There's no way to guarantee that. We talked about this. I don't know if it will happen. There's no way to know if it'll happen, but we know that it is a distinct possibility because of how few people are actually working at Twitter right now. However, we now also know that there is a extremely reduced amount of uh uh oh sorry 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 let me let me let me let me straighten this out. We don't know if they're ever going to go down. However, if Twitter was to be removed from the Google and Apple stores, it would be that would be the end of the app. There would be no what the, the, Twitter would die. There would be no no users. No one is going to manually go to Twitter through their browser on their phone. And also it's a horrible experience. If Twitter got if Twitter somehow manages to get itself banned off of the Apple and Google stores because of this massive security breach or because of a number of other things, we are going to have like like Twitter will be done. It'll just be just done. Um, yes, he did. Uh, we're gonna get to that in just a minute, Grime Dango. Um, it's 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 getting crazy. Okay. So, but on top of that, on top of that fact, we also now know because of previous reporting that was done, which again. Check out the video that I mentioned earlier. I just did a video talking about this. Twitter has has fired a significant amount uh, of their security team, including the entirety of the, or sorry, not the entirety, including the senior members of their security and compliance team. So what that means is not only do they have an active, ongoing, massive breach of identifiable, identifiable private user information, but there's nobody there to pick up the phone at Twitter, which means if there's ongoing breaches, nobody's stopping them, okay? This is a enormous, enormous, genuinely concerning security vulnerability that you should be concerned about. This is gonna be bad for their consent decree with the FTC. It's going to be very bad, okay? And this is the reason why I have been this is one of two reasons why I have been very, very seriously considering wiping my Twitter and just booking it from there once and for all. Um, yes, uh, Huffy says, thanks for covering this, deleting my Twitter account. Maybe I wasn't affected by this breach, but I could be in the future. I do not blame you at all uh, for deleting your Twitter account in entirety. I have not made that decision yet. I plan on uh, deciding that this week as to whether I'm just going to just call it quits and get the hell out of there. Um, my analysis, you know, my position is different. Uh, I, unfortunately, even, even in the post fucking death of Twitter zone, I still have 15,000 people who follow me on Twitter and, uh, this is my job. So I got to think about that. Um, however, the simple fact is it's not a safe website anymore by any means. Would, uh, would deleting my Twitter even do anything at this point if I'm affected? Well, it could. It depends. If the, if the vulnerabilities are still open, which we don't know 100% sure how that's working, um, no, uh, then, then yes, it would prevent you being victim to future leaks. However, remember that the initial leak of this happened back in January of 2021, um, and there has been breaches since then, but it's really hard to tell when. Um, just keep in mind that the general safety of this site is not good anymore. When you use a site like YouTube or when you use a site like, uh, uh, like Gmail or when you use a website like amazon.com, there is a basic, uh, level, there is a, a good faith level of understanding that because this is a huge expensive enterprise that has um, that has all kinds of benefits and deals with all kinds of other people, that there is going to be a baseline of security. Now, of course, security vulnerabilities and breaches happen all the time for various reasons, usually not because of neglect, 
usually because of genuine accidents or targeted, you know, or, or targeted actions. But what we have here is an example of negligence. And when a website gets to the point where security breaches are happening because of negligence, that's when you have to start going, wow, this site is really not safe anymore. And I also want to point out something, which is that, and I, I want you guys to really seriously consider this for a second, okay? Elon Musk wants you to put your credit card information into Twitter. The future of Twitter, in his mind, is to get every single user to be a, ideally, every single user to be a Twitter blue user. The number one feature, you can go look at this. We're going to look at this in just a minute. The number one feature is that your tweets get boosted. You get de-boosted if you are not a Twitter blue user in the new Twitter. So starting in a few days, he wants you to pay to be able to even have your tweets seen at all. Do you really trust putting your credit card in a website that just permanently banned a reporter who reported on a verified, absolutely 100% bona fide data breach? I don't. There is no chance I'm putting that shit in there. There is no chance I'm putting my fucking credit card in there. This was tweeted by Elon Musk four days ago on November 23rd. Oops, sorry. You only saw my group chat. Shut the fuck up. Should Twitter offer a general amnesty to suspend accounts, to suspended accounts, provided they have not broken the law or engaged in egregious spam? The people have spoken. Amnesty begins next week. Vox Populi, Vox Dei. Now this is so stupid. His stupid quote, misquote. Um, now hold on, let me just show you. Please, here's a, 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 uh, here's a, a right wing, a right wing influencer who says, please limit content moderation to illegal content or at most a very narrow interpretation of moderation under section 230 and give users the tools that enable the freedom to choose what content they see. That's the general idea. Gore? Uh, <laughs> questionable porn? Hate speech? All of these things are not against the law. That is the, that is the position that Elon Musk is publicly from his official account announcing. Now, um, on Tuesday, I believe it's Tuesday is the day that he said, hold on, let me just make sure. Tuesday, no, no, sorry, sorry, Wednesday. Wednesday is when this amnesty is supposed to begin. Um, and what that means is that you are going to have a instantaneous mass mass influx of accounts that have been banned for hate speech you're going to see accounts like uh i mean we've already had donald trump come back sargon already was allowed back which we already know what sargon gets up to you guys remember when he was making jokes about how he wouldn't even uh do you guys remember the time when he was talking about uh whether th how he uh wouldn't even rape one of his uh, one of his colleagues when he was tr desperately trying and failing to run for office. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, I remember that too. Um, yeah, Dest yeah, Destiny's gonna have 10, 10 uh, accounts. There's going to be a lot, and I mean a lot of people who were previously banned for violating the TOS, for just fucking straight up hate speech, for posting slurs that are going to be let back in all at once starting on Wednesday. Which, guys, I don't know if you know what Twitter was like back in the old days, but it was not fun, okay? Uh, when During Gamergate, Twitter was one of the most active locations for Gamergate. This was before they cracked down on their content moderation. And the reason why they cracked down on it is because the website became impossible to use for anyone who wasn't a fucking Nazi during Gamergate. I'm not even fucking kidding. You guys have no idea how bad it gets. Now, 
I'm a public figure, okay? I already get a lot of hate. But let me tell you that even since T uh, even even since Twitter 2.0, Elon Musk's Twitter 2.0 um, happened, the amount of just raw hate in my comments has gone way, way up. I mean, just people saying slurs at me, people making jokes about gas chambers. This type of shit has gone way up since I uh, since Twitter 2.0 began. And I'm, I do not even want to think about how fucking terrible it's going to be on Wednesday when the amnesty goes through and you have a whole bunch of literal Nazis with Nazi images in their avatars posting literal hate speech at you because it's not technically against the law. But I want you to also consider the, uh, the following, which is that with a mass influx of 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 hate accounts which is what's going to happen that's who's going to be let out of this um there's also going to be a lot of people who are don't just like keep how do i explain this people who go around posting slurs at people um the vast majority of them are pathetic goblins that live in their mother's basement and spend all their time like finding random women on the internet to scream at but there's also a lot of them who are genuinely involved in spreading and boosting docs, in spreading and boosting opportunities to harm people physically, in spreading and boosting misinformation, conspiracies, lies. So what we're going to have is not just an influx of hate speech, but we're going to have an influx of misinformation. Keep in mind, a lot of the accounts that got banned before got banned for spreading COVID misinformation for literally lying to people to tell them to go take ivermectin because it cures COVID, which it doesn't. We're going to have an influx of people who are involved and associated with or have the or are accounts of known operators who technically didn't violate the law, but who may have been using their Twitter profile to boost the docs of people they don't like. And what that means is that uh, Twitter, Twitter's gonna suck, okay? It already, it's already been drastic. Like, I've already, I've mentioned the, the technical issues I've had. I've mentioned the personal social, uh, 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 distortion that has gone on since a bunch of fucking assholes who have nothing beneficial to add to anything except for to spam slurs at you have been, have been able to flood back in and have gotten all excited and started making alts again on Twitter. But this is a, this is so much worse. It's so much worse. And what that also means is that your timeline is going to be full of a bunch of garbage. There's a lot of things I could say about this, but like, actually, you know what? No. I was I, I was thinking about reading a tweet that I made, but at this point, why even bother? Let me just talk about it fresh here, which is I am a fucking demon, okay? I like to argue with people. I like to insult uh conservatives who who come at me. I like to get down in the mud and fight with people. You know this, I'm a pit fighter. I used to be a de I used to be a debate streamer. That was the main thing that I did. Don't do that anymore, thank God. But I, I'm always been very, very into that sort of thing. Um, but I'm not your average user. And I know that I'm not your average user. The average user goes on Twitter to see funny things, to see things their friends are talking about. The average user does not go on Twitter to be exposed to random hate speech, proposing that they're not human, proposing that they deserve to die, accusing them of crimes that they didn't commit, accusing their friends and family of crimes they didn't commit. The average person will not visit a site like that. You understand? They will just go away. And also, they're right. They're right for doing that. No one should have to go and be constantly subjected to raw hatred at every corner of their life. No person should be expected to do that. Seriously, it's ridiculous. But that's what Elon is essentially forcing on every current user of the site. There is going to be, if you don't think there's going to be an uptick, why do you think these accounts were removed in the first place? The, the accounts that he's giving amnesty to were accounts that were problematic enough that they not only um, got a temporary suspension, 
because Twitter doesn't issue permanent bans or permanent suspensions off the cuff until now, interestingly. They, those usually require a manual review. So these are accounts that people have looked at and gone, oh my God, we can't have this shit on Twitter. It's, I think it's really bad for my mental health. Of course it is. It's bad for everyone's mental health. And I mean this, I wanna be 100% clear. People suffer when they are constantly exposed to hatred. I suffer and I have a really thick skin, okay? I get fucking depressed when I have to log on and no matter where I go on the internet, no matter where I go, whether it's Discord, whether it's Twitter, whether it's YouTube, I have to constantly be exposed to people who think that I'm not human, okay? I hate that shit and I have a thick skin. Other people get really fucking bummed out by that shit and like I said, they're right to. The average person should not, cannot, and will not expose themselves to that type of stuff all the time. I wanna just show you real quick some of the other accounts that have been banned um, specifically because, uh, uh, specifically in Elon Musk Twitter, okay? Let's just take a look here. You guys ready? Take a look at this. This has to be a joke. This is a writer, a, a SNL writer named Zach Bornstein. Delete the tweet. You have violated our rule against hateful conduct. Kind of weird that one dude gets to decide if like a billion of us can communicate or not. Wow. Like, okay. Like, like, like literally just getting banned for criticizing Twitter. Of course, we have the Chad Loader one. I'm also going to point out another one. You guys ready to see one that's particularly egregious? Here we go. Let's read this together. This is a website called CrimeThink. Let me just read you there about. What is CrimeThink? CrimeThink is everything that evades control. The daydream in the classroom, the renegade breaking ranks, the spray-painted walls that continue to speak even under martial law. It is the persistent sense that things could be otherwise. What is crime think? Crime think is a rebel alliance, a secret society pledged to the propagation of crime think. It's a think tank. Crime think is a very popular, a very openly left wing uh, uh, collective of people that write about crime. They write about uh, un injustice. They write about fucking all kinds of different things. They've been around forever. They have a huge following. Some people don't like them, but they don't break the rules on Twitter but they got banned on Twitter randomly. Nobody really knows exactly why they were banned, but let's just read about it. Let's read the article that they wrote about it because they responded to their ban. On November 25th, at the urging of a far right troll, that's right, Andy Neo, Crime Think, an Antifa collective, makes riot guides, text to radicalize people into criminal militancy, and propaganda that is shared via Twitter for people to distribute. They've claimed a number of attacks and give instructions on how to form cells, what riot gear to bring. And guess what? After literally reply, I believe, actually, let's see, can we find it in the likes? Did Was Elon Musk in the likes here? I swear to God, he, was, he responded here. I, maybe I don't have it up, but regardless, I think they put it up here. At the urging of a far-right troll, Elon Musk banned the Crime Think Twitter account. Musk's goal in acquiring Twitter had nothing to do with free speech. It was a partisan move intended to silence opposition while opening up space for the far-right. So now you can see this is a picture of their account being suspended. Uh, here we go. Specifically requesting. Within a couple of hours, Elon Musk had fulfilled uh, Andy Neo's request. Is there, do they show the interaction with him? Oh yeah, here it is. It's right here. He's literally going back and forth with, with Andy Neo. Now, some of you in the audience might not know who Andy Neo is. Andy Neo is... <laughs> Andy Neo was busted just a few years ago for directly providing kill lists to the neo-Nazi gang known as Adam Waffen. I'm not kidding you. This is a matter of public record. Record. Andy Neo got caught providing the names of left-wing journalists directly to a neo-Nazi gang.
Andy Neo is a propagandist. What he writes about is the most heinous, made up fake news crap you can imagine. If you don't believe me, go just go take time to read one Andy Neo article. It is the most slanted, biased, disgusting propaganda you can imagine. And Elon Musk goes back and forth in his comments with this guy and then re and then agrees to ban a collective that did nothing wrong except write about politics. Yes, as High Progressive says, the Hammer story was particularly egregious for Neo. Andy Neo made, uh, took a bunch of pictures of a fight that happened between anti-fascist and fascists and a fascist gang. Andy Neo reported that the anti that the anti fascists beat uh, beat a, the fascists with a hammer. As it turns out, he literally cut the video where you see that the hammer was originally in the hands of the fascists. The hammer was being struck at the heads of anti fascists, and the anti fascists grab the hammer out of the hand of the fascists and then go back into the fight. So he literally blamed the initial victims, the people who were getting attacked. It's fucking terrible. Andy Neo is a piece of shit, okay? Doesn't he also write articles for the Daily Stormer? I don't know, does he? It's genuinely disgusting, okay? Let's continue though, real quick. Prime Thing account on Twitter dates from May 2008. The account has never been suspended or received a warning throughout 14 years of Twitter administration. Neo was not bringing any new material to Musk's attention, but reposted years old screenshots. Other Twitter users were banned under similar circumstances today. Oh, do they have a list? I can confirm my account was suspended after Elon Musk was told about me uh, by far right extremists who have tried to get me murdered numerous times. I was also placed on the Nazi made Antifa list that's being used by bots to mass report accounts that oppose fascism. We haven't even gotten into that. Oh my God, I have so much to talk about. Musk's rhetoric about making Twitter a venue for free speech was a lie. Musk bought Twitter in order to impose his agenda on what he saw as the most influential social media platform remaining outside of the control of people like himself. Now, we're not going to read this whole article, but I want you, I want to read their um, call to action here. Okay. Where's their call to action? Here we go. We encourage you to diminish your dependence on Twitter and other corporate media platforms to explore other sources of information and means of communication. We urge you to mobilize against the far right on every terrain they attempt to seize and to continue organizing against capitalism, state violence, white supremacy, patriarchy, and other forms of oppression. We invite you to talk with your friends and neighbors about what it would take to create a world in which a single billionaire would not be able to control how everyone else can communicate. Let's meet up in a space where no algorithms or autocrats can determine what we are able to dream and create together. Now, I think that's pretty awesome, okay? I think that's a pretty awesome call to action. And now you probably understand why I've been talking about Mastodon, why I've been talking about the Fediverse, why I've been talking about a lot of these other open source platforms, uh, because I think those are one of the many options. Um, and I also want you to understand the grim reality that we're facing. Crime Think did not break TOS. They simply pissed off Elon Musk. Specifically, they pissed off Elon Musk's, apparently somebody he's willing to listen to, Andy Neo, a neo-Nazi collaborator and propagandist. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about where the direction of Twitter is going. And there's more to talk about because as if all of this that I've said right now wasn't enough, let me just, let me just, let me just show you this real quick. Hold on. Let me just clear this out real quick. This is an article written uh, just two days ago by NPR. Okay. Okay. 
Twitter has lost 50 of its top 100 advertisers since Elon Musk took over, the report says. Half of Twitter's top 100 advertisers appear to no longer be advertising on the website. A report from Media Matters for America states that these 50 advertisers have spent almost $2 billion on Twitter ads since 2020 and more than $750 million in just 2022 alone. Seven additional advertisers have now slowed their advertisers to next to nothing, according to the report, which was published on Tuesday. These companies have paid Twitter more than $255 million since 2020. Chevrolet, Chipotle, Ford, Jeep, Kindrel, Merck & Co., and Novartis AG all issued statements about halting Twitter ads or were reported and confirmed as doing so. The others ceased advertising on the platform for a significant period of time following direct outreach, controversies, and warnings from media buyers. Now, I want you to understand, um, Chevy, Ford, Jeep, M Merck, the, the fucking pharmaceutical giant, and Novartis are not woke, libtard, SJW corporations, okay? These are dyed-in-the-wool financial giants. They don't, they're not leaving Twitter because they're so woke, because they're all owned by LGBT POC people, okay? These, these companies are enormous, and what they're saying, what they're saying to, to everyone is, we do not believe that this platform is safe anymore. We can't have our names associated with this website. That is a, that is a very bad sign for the technical future of Twitter. Now, I don't give a fucking shit about the opinions of corporations. However, let's be real. Twitter is a private company. Twitter is a for-profit company and it makes its money from advertising. Where's the money going to come from? Wh where are they going to get their money from? Well, the answer is probably no one, but you have to wonder what types of people will step up their advertising on Twitter if all of the major corporations in the world are backing out because they're woke libtards or whatever, uh, what type of companies, what type of organizations do you think are still going to be willing to buy advertisement on that website? Maybe Murdoch? Maybe Trump? Maybe the Daily Stormer? Maybe a bunch of these other just heinous right-wing things. Yeah, that's who it's going to be. Those are the only people at this point who are willing to step forward, which means not only do we have a giant amnesty of extremely toxic and sometimes explicitly hate accounts coming back to Twitter, not only do we have an influx of right-wing users because they believe that based Elon Musk is going to save the day for them um, and bring about the second bo the boogaloo or whatever, um, but also we're now going to have almost exclusively advertisers who are willing to tolerate a totally insecure environment that bans all lefties, that is hostile to LGBT people, that does not police hate speech at all. Basically, Twitter is going is trying to become truth social. It's trying to become gab. Twitter is going to have an exclusively right-wing base in almost no time. And that's if they can stay afloat. Because... um. Have you ever lost $250 million in a year? Have you? I, I haven't. I've never lost $250 million in my entire life. But guess what? Uh, Elon Musk has lost $750 million in ads just this year. Just this fucking year. Okay? That's... They made... These top 50 who have already stopped advertising completely... The top 50 are done, okay? That's a $750 million loss for Twitter. Now, not only has Twitter lost uh, thousands of employees, not only has Twitter lost millions of dollars in advertisement, not only does losing the top 50% of your advertisers cause a market panic, which means that almost assuredly other advertisers are going to ditch the hell out, but also, Twitter is bleeding users now. So, where does Twitter go from here? 
Well, the answer is nowhere good. There is nothing good that's going to come from a what a site being flooded with explicit hate accounts that's already losing all of its advertisers that has no advertisers to replace it they're not going to be able to keep the doors open for very long they're in debt deep 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 debt and elon musk and twitter as a whole have debtors to pay they owe money to people Briar Money says Musk's bad performance on Twitter is tanking Tesla stocks as well. Yes, the Tesla, the Tesla situation, uh, it's a death spiral, guys. It's a fucking death spiral. And uh, that's why I say, like, I can't make the decision for you if you want to delete your Twitter outright, if you want to just book it off the platform completely. However, I would highly, highly recommend, at the very least, clearing out some of your DMs clearing out some of your tweets, anything that you think that an extreme right winger would want to report you for, because chances are you're going to get reported in the coming days. Chances are you're going to have right wingers swarming all over your account. And also the, the major thing is, while I can't tell you to delete your account, and I don't even know if that's the right answer, because I don't know if deleting your account really does anything uh, in the long run. What I can tell you is that you need to start looking elsewhere. Um, don't be left alone. Don't be stranded. Okay. A lot of people have a really good time and facilitate really amazing social connections on, tw on Twitter, but that's done. We need to be real about it. Twitter is done for stop trying to build, stop spending energy, trying to build your Twitter platform. It is done. It's done on like eight different fronts. Even if the website never actually stops loading, even if you can still go to twitter.com, it's done. It's not safe. The advertisers are gone. There's In two days, there's going to be a massive upsurge in right-wing posters, most of whom were banned for hate speech. Now, real quick, uh, I just want to just, I want to get an idea because, um, because I've had this experience. In addition to all of the crap that I just went over, have any of you had the experience of your timeline just being really boring? Like, I mean, nobody's posting type boring, as in like, there's like five power users and they're the only, including me. I've been noticing that since I got mysteriously shadow banned and then now the shadow ban is gone. I've tested it twice, by the way. Uh, my posts are getting a crazy amount of interaction because my posts are the only post on the timeline. Nobody's fucking posting. Did you see Elon's 88 tweet? I didn't see Elon's 88 tweet. That's correct, K Dash Prime. Hey, thank you, K Red. I appreciate. It. I love this. Uh, I love this top. Although I am a little, little hot. I follow a thousand-ish accounts, and I regularly see maybe twenty or thirty of them tops at this point. Wait, can I see that? Can I see that eighty-eight tweet? Where's the? Did I? Do I have this up here? Oh, I do. What the hell? I wonder what Earth will be like 88 million years from now. What? Is that real? And why? Wait, it is real. I don't, I don't know if that's a dog whistle. Everyone tweeted a bunch of 14 tweets under it. It was preceded by a tweet that had 14 in it. Wait, does it? Let me just double check. I don't see that. You think it's a dog whistle? I have no idea. I do see a lot of people replying 14. I mean... Look, this is the top, this is the, the, this is one of the top responses. One of the top responses is European, it's a crusader saying European men then, and it says European men now, and it shows this guy. So, I mean, his chat, his fans are obviously getting it. But I don't know. 
the dog. Wait, wait, look. I know that eighty-eight is like a dog whistle. I know that eighty-eight is is. Yeah, look. But I just I don't know if this is an example of him. I mean, I I don't know. Maybe I know this. Hate on display. Eighty-eight is a white supremacist numerical code for Heil Hitler. H is H is the eighth letter of the alphabet, so eight eight equals H H equals Heil Hitler. Yes, I know. Um, I know about this part, obviously. In fact, guys, the 88 thing is so well known that most states ban the number 88 in for on like vanity plates. I'm not kidding you. Like you can't get a vanity plate in like California or New York that has the number 88 on it because it's so common. It is very weird, but to be fair, he's replying to a post about like look, I don't know. I just think this is I think this is a red herring personally. I, I don't really know why I need to care about him saying 88 when he literally just listened to Andy Neo and banned a, a well-known left-wing uh, left wing activism group like that has never broken the rules of Twitter. He just did it just because Andy Neo asked him. Yeah, the responses do say enough. Absolutely. Also, do you guys want to see something really funny? Hold on. Where's the thing here? Where did it go? Is it this one? Hold on. Is it this one? Wait, which one is it? Hold on. I gotta show you this. This is so funny. Elon Musk has been unblocking himself from thousands of random people's accounts. Now, I have heard multiple people say this. I am positive I blocked him last week just because I didn't want to deal with people retweeting his bullshit. Imagine my so shock to seeing him be un uh, be unblocked. Now, I have not seen mass reporting on this, so I do not know for sure if it's true. However, I have seen a lot of people saying that they have been forcibly unblocked. Which is, like, the most pathetic thing I can possibly imagine. And he does have the power to do that, by the way. No, that's like, it's, it's, it's him making sure that his thoughts have to be injected into your mind. And by the way, throwing back to when we were talking about the Fediverse, this is part of the reason why the Fediverse is better than Twitter. Because this can't happen. You can choose to block individuals, and your server can block entire connections if they so desire it. So just, just take all of this. Take all of this and recognize exactly what it means for the site. Okay, exactly what it fucking means for the website, which is that it is about that it is already a hellhole and it is rapidly becoming even worse. Oh, yeah, he's in. Oh, they force they force recommend Elon Musk all the time. Like if you I, I've see, I've gotten recommended Elon Musk in the recommended category, like literally perpetually. It will never happen. But yeah, it recommends all the time. Listen to this. Okay, you guys ready? Do you know what the original quote is? Do you guys know what the original quote is? You guys are going to laugh your asses off. Listen to this. This is the initial, the Vox Populi Vox Dei. The Latin phrase Vox Populi Vox Dei, the voice of the people is the voice of God, is an old proverb. But early references to the expression, this is the full quote, uh, 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 sorry, early reference to the expression is in a letter from Alcuin to Charlemagne. The full quotation is as follows. And those people should not be listened to who keep saying the voice of the people is the voice of God, since the riotousness of the crowd is always very close to madness. He keeps saying Vox Populi Vox Dei because he thinks it makes him sound smart. But the original quote, the famous historical quote, is saying that that it's not that. Vox Populi Vox Dei cum tumultuas vulgi semper insaniae proxima sit. He's literally so fucking pathetic and stupid. It's, oh my God, it's so fucking embarrassing. So yeah, Twitter is in an absolutely heinous state right now. It is technically busted as hell. Not only is it technically busted, it's also dangerously, verifiably unsafe. This is not just some fucking random person saying that Twitter is unsafe. Numerous 
reputable security blogs, security magazines and newsletters have been warning people about how insecure Twitter is, is to the point that 50 of their top 100 advertisers have already jumped ship and inevitably more are to follow.